built around a PDP-10 uh, by purchasing digital equipment. And we also had a binary image processor for which uh, uh, Ed Franken and Steve Gray, who were both here, uh, were the architects, uh, was about, had the same number of flip-flops as the whole arithmetic unit of the PDP-10, with, the, uh, with software going back and forth between the, uh, the two arithmetic devices. We basically were able to achieve a very high quality of automatic reading. Uh, we anticipated that the uh, market would be uh, better and uh, would, that we'd need a, a, a machine with uh, higher speed and therefore funded the uh, uh, creation of a uh, super, super PDP-10, we called it Foodly, and it was uh, done by a combination of our engineers uh, guided by uh, some PhD candidates from Stanford and one from MIT. Uh, that machine ended up uh, in our inventory and that was the one that uh, was finally built into a film reader, recorder and used on the so-called movie project. Okay, well, since you bring, brought that up, how did this uh, movie group come about? Who, who instigated it and uh, uh, how, who talked to who? And I had met uh, John Whitney's father in connection with some media work at MIT. Uh, and uh, based on that, uh, John Jr. came to visit me one day, uh, being appointed, we were appointed to him by, uh, by MIT, to his father. As a, as a place where there was some spare computer capacity. Uh, so uh, they came in, worked on their own, worked nights when uh, our staff was not using the machine, and we had some loose agreement, a one-page agreement, that we'd share whatever uh, uh, benefits came out of this process. So we provide the hardware, they provide the talent. Uh, we, through them, got acquainted with what most of the uh, uh, early, the people early, early in the, in the uh, computer graphics game. And did it continue on that one page agreement? Uh, or was it, it never more justified any further <laughs> agreements. The, the, the business was a money loser from day one. Uh, we found that no matter how you tried to uh, uh, control the art directors, they're fundamentally uncontrollable. You had uh, sample pictures, you had them sign off on every aspect of it. Uh, when you got through, they would say, well, I really like that, we could use it, but I'd like it a little more purple or something. So you'd end up running this machine for a whole weekend to make a short strip of film that finally got paid for. It wasn't until we began to do work for Disney where we ran into legitimate uh, uh, contractual balance where the Disney artists were, we were protected from the Disney artists by Disney businessmen. And uh, we uh, successfully turned out films for uh, Disney World, the Florida uh, system, that uh, were quite impressive at the time. They, uh, I remember dandelions being blown in the wind and uh, uh, helicopter uh, oversights of the, of the uh, Great Wall in China. And, uh, and we had to do about seven inserts into that film, all of which were done by the computer graphics group. We uh, came out of that project, I guess, financially whole. Uh, and managed then to lease the machine to uh, uh, Demos and Whitney who'd found separate financing. And as the lease on that expired and they were going bankrupt, uh, we uh, did a midnight requisition, brought the machine back, and eventually sold it to Pacific, uh, Pacific Title. And the, uh, the, uh, and the uh, the machine uh, 
at that point began to be used for uh, restoration films. We had uh, high resolution uh, uh, scanners. We had uh, high bandwidth uh, interactive displays uh, and uh, the, rec the recorder. So most of the film restoration done from Toronto on out was done on that equipment with our contribution being uh, the hardware, a little bit of the basic software, but a great deal of it was Demos, Whitney, and Pacific Title. Hmm. Um, you mentioned the work that was done for Disney for the Florida park. Was that post-Tron, after Tron? Did the relationship no, with this? No, that would have been before Tron. That was before Tron. So oh, wait a minute. Excuse me. No. Uh, Tron, Tron, Tron was a one of a one off kind of thing. Uh, I'm not sure who I'm not, I'm not sure who paid for that. But that but Tron could have preceded the uh, the other work. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I was just wondering because I see maybe the relationship with Disney might have continued after the Work My on recollection was that our first knowing relationship with Disney was when we were brought in to do the, the, the film for uh, Disney World. Okay. Do you have any uh, other recollections? You said uh, Dandelions in the Wind and uh, Great Wall of China. Uh, was it for... Well, the Great Wall of China was done, you know, from a helicopter and... The contribution there was stuff that we didn't get involved with, which was to uh, uh, balance the cameras uh, against the vibration. So it was uh, the same producer we were dealing with was responsible for that. I can't now, I, I went to see the film, but I can't now remember uh, any of the particular scenes. Okay. Um, well, you pretty much brought us to the point where Gary and John uh, uh, let me, let me finished finish and left. <laughs> okay. Um, let's jump back, and if I could, I'd like to ask you a couple of specific questions. Sure. Um, I didn't hear you mention much specifically about pre-press, yet that's something... Pre-press? Pre uh, the triple I's business of Providing magazine. Oh, pre-press. Yeah, oh, pre-press. Okay. Um, can you talk me through your recollections of when that bit, when that, uh, when the company started to to realize that that could be a business, and how that evolved into a business? Yeah. The uh, uh, as I mentioned today at the meeting, we went from reading film to using the same kind of devices recording a film and introduced a uh, 35 millimeter uh, high resolution recorder for engineering drawings. That opportunity led us to uh, uh, provide equipment and services for republication of uh, technical manuals, which involved uh, text, obviously, many line drawings that were scanned and now and then a photograph. And so that put us on the track of uh, integrating illustrations of both scanned and uh, photographic into uh, uh, a layout, a, a magazine style layout for technical manuals. In the meantime, uh, RCA and IBM got into a head-to-head -head battle providing uh, electronic typesetters, uh, and RCA contracted with uh, IIII for a small amount of money to uh, get some of our technology on uh, uh, improving the quality of the CRT image alignment and uh, spot size. So we had a, uh, a, an introduction to RCA. The RCA would uh, send people out to visit me every three or four months to pick our brains on what was going on in the industry. And RCA uh, made a serious uh, management blunder, which was that they had 
10 sales were complete selling uh, 10 video comps a year, and therefore if they had 100 salesmen, they could, have a, they could sell 100 a year. And they went ahead on that process, uh, leading the company to finally abandon the project. Uh, and uh, I persuaded them. I was home in bed uh, with uh, some version of the flu, and on the phone, constantly to uh, the, the retired vice president of, uh, of RCA, trying to persuade him that Tripwire was the best company to pick over that product line. The uh, net result of that was that we bought a, uh, I guess there were about 30 installed machines, uh, another 20 in which the key elements were already in the factory but, but unfinished, uh, about a $6 million cash flow uh, for, as I recall, $2.2 million. Uh, and that shifted Y from the engineering world into the phone typesetting world, uh, bringing along introductions to people like Time Magazine, Newsweek, U.S. News World Report. And uh, that pretty much pushed the company technically until we finally solved the problem of uh, being able to produce photographic images in half tone format at the, at the highest quality level required, which was pen.